So let's get this Nomad 1 out on the beach and get it rigged up for fishing. Now the first thing you've got to deal with is you don't have a rear rack. Now the rear rack on this thing only costs $69, which puts the total price of this still under comparable bikes in its class. But the challenge is that without that rear rack, you're not going to be able to use your melt crate with the rod holders you've built into it. Instead, you're going to have to carry everything in a backpack and install $20 rod holders on the front fork. Now, the, the only issue with putting these on the front fork is you note that the rods go up on the inside and your surf rod, if you're using a surf rod, can't have a really long handle. So for example, here's a surf rod with a long handle and you can see that it's gonna hit the ground as you drive with it. So, let's go out, take this thing out on the beach and see how maneuverable it is with all this gear attached and how comfortable it is riding with the backpack and having these rods on the inside of the motorcycle style handlebars. Now the first thing you've got to do to get to the beach to even do this test is we got to transport it there. Now I've got one of these hitches and it costs about $200, but you don't need to buy one because there is a way to transport a heavy e-bike like this in the bed of your truck. But if you've got an SUV, you need to spend the extra money to get this. Now the first thing you want to do is remove the battery because the load rating on these hitches is only 70 pounds. And once this battery is off, this bike is probably about 62 pounds. So let me put this in the back seat and then we'll load this up and get going. But wait, there is one more step. You notice that this has a hook that's gonna hold the bike upright. So you end up having to buy one of these braces that goes between the stem and the seat post. And I like these ones from Yakima and I'll link this up. Basically it has these two uh, levers that you pop open and I like putting it on the back first, then extending it, and now I just click it shut. Now this is going to push. This is going to push down on this bar and hold the bike in place. Now I'll finish strapping it down and I'll be ready to go to the beach. Take the key out. This hitch comes with this extra safety strap that you must put on to be sure that this hook does not come loose. And I like doing one more step and I'll show you that right now. I like taking a, another strap and I like running it around right there. So in case there was a catastrophic failure, of my hitch, at least the bike wouldn't fall down into the roadway and cause damage to some other vehicle. This is a ratchet strap that's rated at 10,000 pounds, which is more than enough. All done, let's get to the beach and see how this thing performs. Here's a pro tip about doing anything on the beach with a big bike like this. Get a small cutting board and you can put the kickstand on this and that'll keep the bike from tipping over. critical feature for doing anything on the beach is to know about the walk assist function. If you press the minus on your control, the bike will pick up and start moving. And you need that to be able to get through the sand. Once you lift your hand, your thumb off that minus, it'll stop. It's a beautiful day out here at the Carolina Beach Inlet in North Carolina. And before I get set up, I thought I'd show you what I actually bring with me and how I hold it. The first thing is you need to have a decent backpack, one with a belly strap that can keep the pack centered on your back, and then a chest strap as well. And I like the ones with multiple pockets. So what I brought with me 
was of course my helmet that I use on the ride out here. It's about a two mile ride. I've got my rod holder. I only use one rod holder for the big rod because I'm going to use casting jigs on the small rod. Of course, water. And then here's what I brought. I brought fish bites for bait and then all my pre-rigged hooks, the various tools I need, knife, pliers, that kind of stuff. This is what I keep my lunch and some camera gear, you know, cloths and things like that in. And here's the most important thing. Since you don't have a milk crate on the back of this, you don't want to overload the pack. So what I do is I pare down what I'm actually bringing with me to fish with. And I put it all in one of these small bait containers. I got some scent, casting jigs, and the weights I'm going to use when I cast. That's pretty much it. Before I get set up and involved in fishing, I still need to do a test of this thing to see how comfortable it is uh, riding with all this stuff. So far on the trip out here it wasn't bad, but I stuck to the hard pack down there at the bottom. There's some extra weight here, so I'm going to run around different parts of the beach and just see how mobile this bike is with the way it's currently configured. So how to do with the extra weight? You can see I'm in the slightly mushy sand right here and the bike didn't really sink in that much. When I got up here into the transition zone between wet and dry, you can see it started to dig in a little bit, but I was able to move on through. Over here, the tide must have made this really mushy as you can see from these footprints right here. and. You can see how the bike dug in right here as I took the turn. But all I had to do was hit the throttle a little bit and it powered right out of it and then down into the hard pack. I know that was short, but that was certainly enough for me to confirm that the additional weight of my fishing gear and the rods on the front don't interfere with my pedaling, as you can see right here. You can see I've got a little bit of clearance between that second rod and my knee so this is going to work out okay so let's talk about your strategy as you use an e-bike to fish on the beach now as you can see from this typical picture right here most anglers are stationary which means they either walk or drive to a point they plop down and they put their rods out and basically they just have to wait for fish to come by right now it's mid-november and the big migration is on as the bait moves south and the Spanish mackerel were moving, everybody's going south. So what the e-bike gives you is the ability to follow that migration. So instead of just going out, plopping down in one place, what I do with the e-bike is I ride down the beach until I see an indication of fish activity. And that could either be bait busting out of the water as the predators chase them up, cause them to jump, or you can see birds diving down, uh, trying to go for the bait. And so with the e-bike, I can run down the beach 10 miles or more looking for that spot. And if I don't see it, well, then you plop down and you enjoy the sun and you wait. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna take a run around, see if I can find any fish, but I think I'm gonna do another test here first, which is how mobile is this without any battery power at all? because you may overextend yourself and find yourself with a drain battery. Can this thing move at least through the hard pack easily with just human power and the gears? Let's check that out. Here's where I'm gonna run the test. I know I can't get through the loose sand, but I wanna get through the slightly mushy and then the hard pack without any power at all. I'll hop on the bike, leave it off, Pedal assist zero. Let's go. Well, I 
obviously better with power, but as you can see from my tracks down here, I was able to move easily through this not really hard pack, slightly mushy sand to get up to the top back to where I had the big curve up there when I was under power. Now I did discover that running over these ripples down here took a lot more effort because the, the sand is mushy down here. So the lesson there is stay in the hard pack. Now I was able to come right up this steep slope right here. It took a little bit of effort, but I was able to do it. So my conclusion is that if you get stuck out here, you can still get back as long as you have some hard pack. That's the optimum. It takes a lot more effort to get through the slightly mushy sand. Obviously with power, that's not a problem at all. A few other things to comment about the functioning of the bike. Shifting was smooth, love the hydraulic brakes. I like the suspension. I felt like it helped me stay in control and I didn't have any problem moving on any of the sand I've tried so far today. So you've got all this power, what's the safe speed to run on the beach? Well, I recommend you don't go more than 15 miles an hour because you never know where that soft spot is going to be. You know, it might look like it's a hard pack, but wham, you hit a soft spot, you sink in, and it could be a disaster. So keep it to 15 and below, even though this thing will run up to 20 miles an hour. I'm going to run along the beach now, see if I can find anything migrating or bait busting. Like I said earlier, if you go at a moderate speed, you can observe everything. And right now I'm watching the shoreline here to see if I can see any bait moving around. There are no birds out, so they're not going to help me today. And I don't see any bait busting up out of the water. This might not be a good day. One thing I'm grateful for is the puncture resistant lining on these tires when you see all these sharp oysters stretched along the shore. I try and stay just in the sand, but sometimes you can't help it and you gotta go across the oysters. Didn't see anything driving up and down the beach. So sometimes this is a good spot. I'm gonna stop here and fish a little bit, but I just don't feel it today. I don't think there's gonna be any action. Well, it's just not going to be today. Beautiful day, no fish, but a great day to go cruising on the beach. My assessment of the Nomad 1, fully capable beach bike. It, I was comfortable carrying my pack. I do have to strap down my rod holder a little bit better. You can see it came loose down here at the bottom, but that's my problem and not a problem with the bike. Now it's obvious you can carry more stuff if you buy the rear rack and I would recommend you do that because then you can put a milk crate on there and carry longer rods like I mentioned at the start of the video. But if you don't want to spend that money, here's a $20 solution. Get yourself a pack and go for it. You guys have any suggestions for how to run a e-bike on the beach without a milk crate? If so, throw them down below. Thanks.